If you would please turn with me to the book of Psalms 46 verse 1 and 2. And I will be reading the opening two verses and the closing two verses. Psalms 46 verse 1 and 2. And I'll read verse 10 and 11 as well. If you have it, it reads as follows. It says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. It says, therefore, I will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the sea. Verse 10 reads, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Now this morning, it is indeed a privilege for us. When we look at where we're at, I think one thing we can uh, agree on is that we, we, we've come to know that in this uh, life that we have, there's a whole lot of uncertainty in every earthly refuge. When we are faced with public calamity and with national disasters like the one we're currently facing, we see the depression of trade where companies are closing down. Uh, everything is just going backwards and we cannot help but to look for a safe place, a refuge where we can just feel like we're safe. And in our scripture reading, as we read that he's a very present help in trouble, it seems to me like trouble uh, seems to drive you to your refuge. Meaning that if, if trouble drives you to your refuge, it fulfills its mission. Not that trouble is necessarily uh, uh, the grace that should push us to get to know God. But in our troubles... That's when we should hear the voice of the Lord. In our troubles, that's when we should hear and feel His touch. In our troubles, that's when the Spirit of the Lord should lead us. I want to address you very shortly on the topic, the bold and the obedient. Now you see our, our, our opening verses in Psalms 46, it opens with a very bold statement. It says, the Lord is my, our God is our refuge and our strength. An uh, ever-present help in trouble. An uh, ever-present help in trouble. Now, if you listen to this bold statement, one thing I can tell you, if you've been a child of God for a while, if you've been a child of God for a season, you can certainly declare and make the same bold declaration that our God is our refuge and our strength. An uh, ever-present help in time of trouble. Now, if I can tell you this. You see, we can use this as our battle cry because when we go out there, what we do is this very same bold statement is what we plan as the flag of victory that flies high so that everyone else can see that as children of God, we are winners. An ever-present help in time of trouble. So if a burden has been lifted, you know he was the one who was doing the lifting. You see, what you need to understand, if a way has been made, he is the one who made the way. You see, if darkness has been has been lifted. If darkness disappeared, you know it was His light that was shining. If you find yourself on the other side of your valley, it's Him who walked you through those difficult situations. Let me tell you something. If you survive grief and pain, understand something. It's God that saw it fit to send us a comforter. So when you know that He's our refuge and our strength in time of trouble, Nothing that this world can offer will be able to shake us or separate us from the love of God. Verse 2 reads, it says, even if the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the sea, it says, I will not fear. Meaning, the fact that you know gives you the assurance that nothing that I know now or nothing that I face now will be able to change what I know about the God who is my refuge. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. In other words, the moment you look to God for help, the moment you look to God to get you out of a situation, your strength is renewed. 
Remember, there's no way you can see trouble without seeing your helper. Because the, it, the, the verse is very clear. It says he's an ever-present help in time of trouble. So when you look at trouble, I hope you see your helper. Because he's always by your side, no matter what you're facing. One thing I, I can tell you about walking this walk, it's not going to be an easy road. But we have the assurance that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. In other words, whether you're going through difficult times, even at this very moment, while we've been on lockdown for some 40 odd days, let me tell you something. Our God is our refuge, our safe place, our strength, our ever-present help in time of trouble. So that's a bold statement to make in this time. But you see, this powerful psalm, that starts with this bold statement and bold declaration of faith. Does not end with a bold declaration of faith. But it ends with a demand for the faithful to be faithful. It says, be still and know, this is verse 10, that I am God. And I want to pause there for a while. Because if you've learned anything about faith, you know now that faith without works is dead. It's impossible to please God without faith. So faith speak of walking in blessings. Faith speak of uh, getting to a point that looked impossible, but you trusted the process and you started walking. And here we asked to be faithful as the faithful. You see, faith always demands for you to do something. God blesses Abraham. He says, you will be the father of nations. He says, your descendants will be like the stars in the sky. But this is what you need to do to walk into this blessing. Pick up and go to a place you've never been. And go and enjoy blessings and provision that you know little of. The problem is your faith sometimes tell you, I don't know how, or your faith sometimes tell you, you don't see it happening. But you see, that's why we don't walk by faith. We don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. So what we need to understand is, while we're in this situation, while we don't see a way out, he is our way out. So faith allowed Abram to pack up, leave his comfort zone, and start moving. You see, God says to Joshua, I've given you Jericho. And because you believe, Joshua, I want you to walk around the walls and the walls will come caving in. You see, it's not that you have to do nothing when you have faith. Some of us find this easier rather to not believe because then at least there's no demand made on you to do anything. But even Jesus, oftentimes linked receiving your blessing, receiving your healing to you doing something. Jesus makes it possible. He, he shows you. He indicates that the miracle is possible. But he wants to see if you have the faith. Will you be able to activate that believing faith and take action? You see, the man at the pool that was laying there, Jesus said, do you want to get well? Do you want to be made whole? And after the man replied, if he ever replied, Jesus said to him, Rise up, take up your bed, and walk. In other words, every time you believe, there's a demand on you to do something. You see, the blind man, while he called on Jesus, when Jesus got to him, he wants to receive his sight. After Jesus mixed a bit of mud, placed it on his eyes, Jesus now tells him, go and wash yourself in the pool of Shalom. Meaning that if you want God to do something for you in this time, what are you prepared to do when God speaks? You see, in your time of trouble, it becomes difficult to hear the voice of God because now you're looking at your situation and you don't see a way out. But in your situation, when you hear His voice, when He tells you, rise up and go, you rise up even if you couldn't do it a few minutes ago. You open up your eyes, you walk to the pool, you wash your face, and all of a sudden sight is possible because you were prepared to take the step. The same with Lazarus. While Lazarus is laying in the tomb and his sisters are upset with Jesus because he now died because Jesus delayed 
You see, when Jesus gets there, the only thing he requires from them is to do what's possible for them. He says, you remove the stone. I will call Lazarus back to life. You see, when he got to the banquet where the host was a bit embarrassed because the wine ran out, all Jesus said is, do the part that you can do and fill these jars with water. The miracle of turning the water into wine, that's my business. You see, there's some situations that you look at and it looks impossible. But let me tell you something. If you listen to the voice of God, there's always something that God wants you to do. There's always a demand made on the faithful to be faithful. Then verse 10 says, be still and know that I'm God. I want to pause on be still. You see, many times we don't understand. Being still does not mean don't move. And I love the way language evolved over the years, even words. Because there was a time when the word bad meant bad, not good. But you see, today if we say, that's a bad keyboard player, what we're actually saying is a good keyboard player. And as words start evolving, I need us to understand in the context of being still. It doesn't mean keep quiet. What it means is let go. Leave what you're struggling with. You see, because uh, if, you, if you read in Exodus, while there was invasion of um, the Israelites, they were invaded. And at this point, there was no chance for them to succeed if God did not come through for them. So understand something. In this time, when it's impossible for you, you've maybe tried everything you could. But now it's a time. Where you called upon to be still, meaning let go. Don't do anything. This you leave up to me. You see, the only way God can be exalted, like verse 11 says, like verse 10 says, the only way he can be exalted amongst the nations. When Israel was invaded, the Gentiles could see these people don't stand a chance. In fact, they don't have any way of escape unless God comes through for them. They will not. Their existence as an independent country is now at risk. And unless God does something. And God delivers them. Meaning now he's exalted even with amongst the nations because they know on their own they could not do it. It must have been God. But you see, the important part is be still. In other words, let go. The stuff you've been struggling with is probably stuff you're never going to sort out. But until you leave it to the God that you know, you will continue struggling until you get to a point of ceasing to strive, ceasing to struggle with your own stuff. You see, when Jesus came to, uh, on the boat and he fell asleep and the sea became boisterous and people and the disciples started stressing. Now, please, let's not take away from the fact that these guys were experienced on waters. But you see, even your experience in life sometimes find us where we are now, where none of us know how this is going to pan out. But just like he was in the boat on the sea with these guys who was experienced, Life sometimes gives you some, some stuff that you can't control. And maybe the only way God can show us that he's in control is when we are in situations that we can't control. So understand something, that while we are looking at situations, God already knows how it's going to play out. Then I want to move to the part that says, and no, be still. And no, but I want to emphasize this. The greatest emphasis on being still and knowing is not on being still, but in knowing. Because you see, when you know, you know. Nothing that happens around you affects you because what you know now informs your emotions, your actions. Everything is informed by what you know. So if you know that he is God, no demon in hell can stand against you and win. Because the God that's in you is greater than him that is in the world. When you know who you surrendering your life to, it becomes easier. When you know that whatever you do, 
is dependent on your relationship with God. You see, knowing talks about the intimate relationship. It has nothing to do with your intellectual knowledge. Uh, excuse me if you think oh, uh, knowing means uh, what's happening in your head. No, that's not what we're talking about. You see, until you get to a point where you have an intimate relationship with God, all you have at the moment is the bold statements that you can make. How you can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It's a bold statement to make. But understand something. There's some obedience that goes with that. Because you're going to have to listen to what God says and move accordingly. You see, once you walk in obedience, the journey of faith becomes a bit more easier. You see, once you walk in obedience with God, this walk of faith becomes doable. The impossible becomes possible because you have a God that's greater. A God that's bigger than whatever can ever come your way. When you know life is out on of control, but God is in control, you get to a point where nothing moves you, nothing phases you, because your God is a God throughout the ages. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So no matter what your current difficulty is, no matter what your situation is, understand something, that our God is able. All He wants you to do is, even in our present situations, even in our troubles, let's be obedient to His Word. Thank you for all the bold statements that we can make as believers. Thank you for all the bold statements that we can make uh, as children of God. But understand something, there's a demand made on the faithful to be faithful. So thanks for being full of faith, but can we get to a point where we start doing something about the faith that we proclaim to have? I want us to, in this time, when everything looks dark and gloomy, understand that God is a God who is faithful. God is a God who is able. We sing, we say, He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. But in your darkest situation, you fail to see that there's a helper, ever-present helper in time of trouble. I want to close and I want to ask you this morning what everything that you proclaim with your mouth, every declaration that you make how many of them are you willing to back up with some actions when people look at you do they see a, a, a man or a woman a young man, a young boy a young woman, a young girl do they see you as somebody that walks with boldness because you have a God inside of you that's prepared to carry you all the days of your life. Do they see somebody that walks in obedience? Even if everybody goes left, you will go right because that's exactly what God expects from you. The obedience is better than sacrifice. So many times we will sacrifice everything but still be disobedient. Understand something, beloved. We need to get to a point where we obey God rather than men and do what He requires from us to do. So while we're in this time of quietness, I realized for 40 some odd days, some of us never went to work. We were locked up in our houses with our wives. And for some of us, uh, uh, it's not normal to spend so much time. We know we said for better, for worse, and forever. But forever was probably not with the mindset of being next to each other for every second of every day. But you see, in this time, you see what the relationship is really made of. Just like with God, the more time you spend with Him, the more clarity you have with regards to your relationship with Him. You see, for some of us, while we're in this quiet time, understand something. You now have an opportunity to work on the emphasis of my verse 10. Be still, but the emphasis and know. Sometimes you fail to know because you're busy with the hustle and bustle of life. So much so that you never have time to spend, uh, to know God, to spend in conversation with God, to read the word of God. Those days of making excuses about time is over because we had lockdown for some 40 odd days where you had the opportunity. But are you willing to spend some time and get to know the God that we have bold declarations about? Are we willing to make time and walk in obedience to the same God that promises us a whole lot of good things, uh, a blessing with my name on it? It's easy to say all those things, but understand it comes with you doing something about what God wants to do for you. 
So this morning, on this beautiful Sunday morning, I want you to know that our God is our refuge and our strength. And He is an ever-present help in time of trouble. Don't ever look at your problems the same. When trouble comes, look for your ever-present helper who's there. Because trouble don't come alone. They come with your helper. But you need to know this helper. And this morning, my, my appeal and my challenge to you is get to know him in the few days that you still have left of lockdown. We don't know how long it's going to be. But make sure you get to a point where you have this relationship with God. You see, when, God, when the Bible says Adam knew Eve, it was not about, oh, what's your name? My name is this and that's it. And no, 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 no. When he says Adam knew Eve, it's more intimate to the point where there was fruit because they knew. You see, your relationship with God should now produce fruits because you know. So let's see a whole lot of fruits during this time where God is a God of love. There should be no one who goes without having. There should be no one who's there with nothing. When God is love, you look at your neighbor and you make sure we can get what we need to get. All I'm saying is this morning, the challenge is for us to be bold and obedient. Make your bold statements, but walk in obedience. And let's trust that God will get us even through this tough and difficult times that we're in. I want to, do, I want to pray. So wherever you are, you can grab the hands of your neighbors as I just do a very simple prayer, knowing that by faith, we release everything that God has in store for you. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We exalt you for there is none like you. Father, thank you for the opportunity we had to listen to your word. And your word reminded us this morning that without faith, it's impossible to please you. Father, our heart's desire is to please you. So, Father, as faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, Father, we are here listening to your word, Father. And, Father, we want to do according to your will. Have your way in our lives, Father. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding guard our hearts and our minds so that our minds can be fixed on you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.